Hi, I'm Mark Blanchard from Le Vivre Platon. Today we're going to review the Garmin. This is the model RV770LMT-S. It's a long name, but the main idea is that it's an RV dedicated uh, GPS for uh, navigation down the road. One of the problems we found, we have another Garmin Nubie, I believe it is, and it works fine, especially with a car. But when you get into a large vehicle and you start to uh, see that there are problems with parking and turnarounds, you want to start to think about something that's a little more specified for the RV. In the case of the, the RV770, it's a 7-inch screen, so you can see it well. It's voice activated, so you can use your cell phone with Bluetooth and also uh, prompt command controls uh, so you can keep your eyes on the road. The main reason I bought it, though, was when I went to like gas stations, and uh, specific routes where it may have not been adequate uh, road, uh, I found that it was a big problem uh, to uh, use the newbie because of the fact that uh, it sometimes guided me in the wrong direction. The main one being gas stations. I've pulled into several gas stations that either didn't have diesel or you couldn't hardly get the RV into there with a 40-footer as we have here in our Phaeton. Uh, they're too tight, they weren't designed for anything but cars, and that's a big problem. Obviously now we mainly focus on truck stops that have big uh, gas stations, but there are other things like clearance, road conditions, grades that you want to know. The Garmin uh, claims to do all that, so let's do an out-of-box experience on this and see how we fare with this new device. So let's open up the uh, Garmin RV770, see what we have. Comes with a protective screen, of course. Comes with a protective screen uh, to cover the glass. And then your product ready to use, registration. And then I believe that will come off right here, peel that off. And normally I will charge these up uh, before we use them, but in this case I'm going to do without. Inside, then we have also USB cable, a ball joint, swivel, so that when you lock it in you can rotate it around fairly standard on them. A manual and then of course the plug for 12 volt. So you need to find a good stable way to mount your GPS to your RV so when you're bumping around, bouncing around, it's not flying all over the place. There are several methods. You can use a CD slot holder. You can uh, use what comes with the device which is the ball and swivel it works pretty good. This happens to have a suction cup which you tighten down and then it locks. But I find that even using a suction cup they'll come loose a lot of times and the other problem is in the RV if you want it in your forward direction of driving the windshield on my Phaeton is so far away from where my steering wheel is that I can't touch any controls and the screen is a little harder to see. So what I've done is several options. I've either mounted it on the CD player or what I've done also is use this beanbag base to mount uh, the ball swivel. With this then you can move it pretty much anywhere. It will sometimes roll around a little bit but it's very versatile and I kind of like that. So once you snap into the ball you can now then articulate any direction you want and move it anywhere you want and it's pretty secure. You can see also the comparison of my, I believe this is a four and a half inch screen uh, on my old device compared to the new one. The letters are a lot larger which means you can have it farther away or if you're older and your eyesight's failing obviously that's a big benefit. So let's get started. Why would you want to get an RV GPS? 
there are several reasons. There's two or three models. There's a smaller version of this and a six inch. And then there's also, I believe uh, it is uh, Rand McNally, but I've heard there's have been issues with that software. Uh, so that's why I picked this unit. The benefit, as I mentioned, is that it knows your vehicle profile once you load it and it sets the direction that is best recommended due to restrictions of highways for weight, for height, and also uh, liquid propane. Uh, there are some areas evidently where you cannot drive uh, that uh, if you have liquid propane on the vehicle a certain amount. So in this device, uh, I can go and I can set, uh, pre-configure what uh, my vehicle is. In this case, it's a 40-foot Phaeton. And I can tell the weight, the width, the height. And then uh, it will coordinate on the map to the optimum route. Parking is an issue. It can tell you where there's longer length parking uh, in an area. Uh, the big thing also is gas stations, which gas stations are more RV friendly than the others. You have the voice command so that you don't necessarily have to touch the device uh, to use your phone or to even navigate through the commands. I find that it's a little bit cumbersome doing that, but some people like it. Bluetooth, you can link up your cell phone so that uh, you can receive incoming calls. There's a microphone on here then that transmits then back to your phone and then your hands free. It also will give you traffic updates so that uh, when it talks to other devices and if it can see the web it will look at the GPS traffic to see uh, road conditions. Are there traffic accidents, you know, delays, rerouting and detours? Of course, it's not always up, always up to updated, and that that can always be an issue. But it's a big help. So let's start by configuring this, setting it up, vehicle profile. In this case, I've loaded my vehicle, 32,000 pounds, 40 foot six inches long. 12.7 is what they claim to be is the length or the height of the vehicle and 8.4 on the width. You can also select a car, but then it will say it's not gonna obey the motorhome uh, profile. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna select the RV, of course. Also, you can select your tank. Here we have a 40 pound tank uh, that's in profile one. Here's where if you go back into the wrench settings picture, the icon, you actually load the profiles of the vehicle. You can also adjust it to set up maximum speed that you want to go. I typically, you know, go around, you know, it depends on the speed limit, but I try and stay about at the speed of the trucks in the truck lane. Uh, and typically 65 would be my maximum. And usually I'm doing 60 at the most. Now that we have the vehicle profiles loaded we can define the best route. You can also set up your map and vehicle what kind of icon you want to have it look like map de details. I find I want the most details but sometimes when you have too much information you can't tell what's going on so you can set it to normal less or more. Map tools. Uh, these are the icons that you'll use to navigate. You'll stop the navigation, change route, what's the turn up ahead, uh, give elevation which is really handy. So for instance you're going over a mountain pass you'll be able to go and see what the elevation profile is and you can optimize then for those grades with your braking and your exhaust retardant. Shows the turns, trip data, how, what the speed is and mileage, volume, brightness, traffic, and then your phone. And uh, you even can go live and find photos of intersections, which I find that kind of odd, but I guess 
you can uh, see what the condition is at a particular camera at an intersection. That is if you activate another account uh, with Garmin. And also it will give you weather updates through your your cell phone I believe uh, which is can be very handy. You can look at the map layers. Here we have uh, several trip log, parking, traffic, and up ahead places. And uh, you'll definitely want to upload the maps to uh, the latest maps that you're going to use. Setting up your navigation preferences. Uh, you can set the fastest time off-road if you're in a Jeep, shortest distance, which minimizes the driving distance. And one that I got into a problem one time is I was hauling the 40 foot with a 25 foot trailer. The route had been rearranged that the entrance to the highway was not where it originally had said it was on the GPS because the map wasn't updated. I ended up having to do a T-turn in a double laned uh, intersection. Luckily there was no traffic but with that trailer that was not good. If I'd have kept going I was on a county road and wasn't sure how long it was going to be before I could turn around so that was a big issue. Uh, if you want to avoid highways or ferries um, and also carpool lanes, uh, probably you're going to avoid carpool lanes and a maybe unpaved road. It depends how you treat your RV and where you want to go. If you're boondocking, all these rules kind of change and you're, it's out the window. So you have to turn some of this off. You can also add custom avoidances such as avoid this area I'm not sure why you do that maybe you don't like that city or you don't want to support their football team or uh, gang ridden area I don't know but uh, you can avoid those areas and roads and of course sometimes you have experience with roads that you don't like for one reason or another and the, the Garmin may not pick up that route as being bad or good you can also allow or disallow tolls for the road uh, environmental zones so like the propane restrictions and uh, you can disable the functions for changing while it's while the vehicle is moving and you can do GPS simulation for the traffic you need to connect to a smartphone I haven't actually connected to this one yet uh, so we'll need to pair up Go to wireless, enable Bluetooth, and then uh, you're going to check for search for devices. So now I've paired searching for the device and pairing. Hit OK. It's showing the same code on both, and then you pair. Uh, it may run up your data plan on your phone, but it's really convenient for things like uh, traffic, so you, you may want to use it for that. Other features. You can do all kinds of things here where you set up the, the GPS uh, so it's safer. Speed limits. Uh, railroad crossings, it will give you audible saying warning uh, crossing the, the railroad. It will suggest suggest breaks uh, on long trips. I believe it's two hours is what this one's set up to. You can also set down the map preferences. Here's a big one that people probably change a lot. 3D mode is nice, it's it's pretty. I, I'm so used to using a paper map that I tend to use north up 
and I think people that don't use north up get confused eventually as to what direction they're going but the problem is if you're going south your vehicle is traveling south which means down and almost everyone likes to see going the same direction as your vehicle on the display here so they tend to use the track north which will rotate it to here that can be convenient but I think what happens is spatially you start to get lost as to where you're going because you don't really know which direction you're going in up north mode I always know where true north is compared to what direction I'm traveling and it gives me a better sense of of navigating especially if I don't trust the GPS in traffic mode we're going to select this again. You have to load a link on your phone for um, this to, to work properly. So you can use app on your phone which will give you a lot more smart guidance and tools uh, for navigation. There's a thing called Foursquare which I think is going to be their version of Yelp or something like that. Maybe there's a revenue stream there. You can pick your location. Uh, on the map on the phone and then send that location coordinates to the GPS and we'll route your contacts live track will give you the viewership of I believe the uh, cameras uh, you can hook it to a watch also and you can check the weather most of this you know you already have on your phone but um, it, it appears to be an advantage according to Garmin anyway they're pushing the app the main reason you have to have it though is to have the smart feature so if we go in here to pick a location and let's say we want to go somewhere uh, for instance uh, maybe we go to hey let's go to Valley of Fire does that sound good easier to use Google I think still Google Maps is is a lot better but Valley of Fire is right in this region, so we can tap on this location. And then what you can do is send those coordinates. So it's sending the coordinates now to the GPS. A uh, way that I normally like to use, though, is the app on Garmin. Especially if I have more than one location I'm going to go to. Uh, I tend to normally need to do trip planner select start location where I am now select select destination I'm going to enter valley of the fire and it's going to now calculate how to get there and it's taking a long time I believe from the restrictions uh, that it's got to calculate in on the location I'm also going to tell it probably to go a different way because uh, I'm, I've decided I'm not going to go down Highway 5 any more than I have to. Uh, only because uh, traffic seems to be worse there than 101 and when you get south of the Val Silicon Valley. It's going to give me several routes to go. I believe as options once it calculates. Let's add a location to make sure it goes down to Pastel Robles. Since I know 101's on there. I normally use this feature also. You don't normally don't have the address that you need to go to half the time. So you just browse the map. And I find that to be the most effective way. So I'm going to scale in. And I'm going to go south on 101. Down to Paso Robles. I'm going to keep going south. Down to, I believe, 46. Here. And let's say, well, let's go to Wine Country. One of our favorite places. I think it's right here. Wine Country is right here. Boom. You 
you select that and that's an added location so now on this I'm going down to wine country and then I'm going to cut across to uh, the main route which is going to basically keep me off of Highway 5 most of the time. There we have it. Let's check our location. Yeah, we definitely stay off of 5. We're cutting across on 46 now, which is not too terrible of a road. So this is our route. We're going to save it now. And then I can tell it to go. And then you can add a truck stop or another location. Let's see what we can find for RV parks. You can filter for amenities. Let's say full hookup. Uh, pull through if you want 50 amp. Big rig access. We'll need that probably. And for us, we'll need pets. We save that in there as our profile that we're looking for. Now it's going to look uh, in all the area that you're close to. The funny thing is that you know I won't need it until halfway there, so I don't normally find that very functional. I'm also noticing that it doesn't really pick up many parks, and I would rather go to. Uh, RV Parky which is a website link and you can put that app on your phone and you'll find that it will list almost every park uh, on RV Parky. This you know is showing first connections are 50 miles away uh, that may be the case but I believe there's a lot more that are closer. Another nice feature is the voice command so if I say voice command voice command down Volume, unmute, 50. Volume is at 50%. 80. Volume is at 80%. 60. Volume is at 60%. Back. Main menu. Weather. The temperature is 73 degrees. Voice command. Say a command. View map. So another nice feature I like to, to see, as, as I'd mentioned, is the elevation. Uh, it's important because when you have high grades of 6, 7, 8, 9 percent on a 20 ton vehicle, brakes are a big issue. So you want to know what the profile is of where you're driving. Here we're showing one steep place in the location ahead of us. And it's going to go and show us these elevation peaks as we go through time. When you get into the mountain passes, then you can start to look at the profiles to see what the grade is and how slow you probably should be going at the top of the grade as you're slowing down. So I find that as a, a good safety feature. I can't see your hand. <laughs> Got a floor right now. See the elevation is going to go to about 4,200 feet. Uh, going up, huh? Almost to the peak. The blue line is where we are, I guess. Voice command. Hello. Voice command. Say a command. Find place. Find place. Speak the name of a place. Auto safe glass. Place. It's another place. We have to go to Canada. Did you say satellite autocross? One. Searching 
for satellite articles. Select a line number. We are trying out our new toy. Ami, Aman, GPS, Avi, GPS. Is it working so far? Yeah, down. 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 Would you like to begin navigation? Yes. Start new route or add as next stop. Add as next stop. Voice command. Oh, she's not responding. Voice command. Still not responding. Voice command. Travel Center. Searching for Pilot Travel Center. Like to begin navigation? Yes. Continue on I-15. for an RV GPS the RV 770 while well, that's a mouthful the RV 770 is a very effective model to buy uh, to go down the road so happy trails and we'll see you next time I'm Mark Blanchard La Vie Flotante don't forget to subscribe to like and to pass our information on share with us see you next time bye bye <music>